Joining us now, the president and founder of Parents Defending Education, Nicole Neely. Nicole, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Nicole, you've been tracking this problem nationwide. Let's watch a Florida school board official in Clay County near Jacksonville, Florida, cut off a father, shut him down. He was trying to show how children are exposed to pornography in books in the local school library. Watch this. I'm going to read things. If there's children watching, cover their ears. I'm going to stop you right there. Turn off his microphone, please. The problem is, sir, is these meetings are broadcast. There are people at home that are watching it on YouTube. There are people that are watching it on community television. Are you going to listen or are you going to run your mouth? There are federal and state laws that prohibit you from saying the things that you're getting ready to say on television. There are state laws that prohibit and federal communications laws that prohibit you from publishing these things to a child. You don't have the you don't have the ability at this point to determine who's watching the television show, and for you to say everybody cover your ears just doesn't cut it. Uh, should this guy be fired? So he this father can't read this at a school board meeting, but school children can read this in school libraries. And did he say are you going to run your mouth? This father does. We don't work for him. The father doesn't work for the school board. Taxpayers do not work for the school board. The school board works for us. What is your reaction to the story? I'm not surprised. I mean, we have seen district after district across the country really get inconvenienced by this whole consent of the governed idea. But it's, I mean, parents are up in arms about the kinds of books that their children are being exposed to because, as this elected official pointed out, you know, it does violate obscenity laws. The Independent Women's Forum last year tried to run an ad before the election in November in Virginia with excerpts from some of these books, and it was rejected on FCC obscenity grounds. And so why are we allowing our children access to this material? That's right. So you're saying this happened nationwide, right? I mean, this Clay County School District father, yep. Bruce Friedman, he told Fox News Digital that these books are vile. There's no literary, literary value to any of it. It's poison. That children should just be taught reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's it. He's, you know, so what is your take on this, uh, what's happening? Do you, when you saw this go on with this school official and this father, what are you seeing here and what are you seeing happening nationwide? Sure. I mean, we're seeing districts come up with tons of reasons why people shouldn't be allowed to read those excerpts from books, why the community should not be informed about the kinds of books that their children have access to. Actually, in Forest Hills, Michigan, a district there said reading excerpts from these books would be a copyright violation, and they did so on the advice of the Michigan School Board Association. And so, again, this kind of rock goes up and down where we can let the children read the books, but let's not tell the parents and let's not tell the community or the taxpayers about it. You know, it. It's, so, it's so scary for parents, right? what their children are being exposed to, and it's wrong. It's just immoral and wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people have to go. Right. I mean, you have, now you have the Teachers Union President, Randy Weingarten. She's getting slammed on social media. She said, quote, schools are too politicized. Critics are saying, look in the mirror. What is your take on this? I mean, let's remember that 99.99% of union donations go to Democrat candidates. So let's start there. I mean, last week at the NEA annual meeting, they voted to create an enemies list of people who oppose their radical gender activism. Um, the year before, they created an enemies list about people who oppose their critical race theory, race baiting agenda. And so let's talk about who's really being political, who's trying to intimidate and bully families to stay away and keep their mouths shut. You know, I mean, it's it's absolutely, it's rich and it's ironic. How did common sense fly out the window on this issue? You know, because here's the thing. Children are not ready for adult topics, period. Whether it's critical race theory, issues about racism or sex or gender. You have to wait for children to be ready for these mature topics. How dare they push this on children who are scared already, who feel quickly guilty and rapidly feel guilty, especially little girls and, and little boys, by the way. I should say both. So who are they to do this to children? How, do they, how are they suddenly experts in what children should be taught? Yeah, the fact that these school administrators, um, you know, are so determined to rip our children's innocence away is appalling. And I think, you know, were it not for COVID two years ago, many parents still would have no idea about the kinds of lessons and the kind of activities that are taking place in classrooms, you know, throughout the school year. They have our children from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in most cases. And to many of us, it's been a black box. We've been kept at arm's length. We don't know the curriculum. We don't know the lesson plans. And when we ask, we're made fun of and mocked. You know, it's no wonder parents are up in arms because 
organizations that we used to trust, like the teachers unions, like the National School Board Association, like the National PTA, have stabbed us in the back. They have shown that they're more interested in their power and their money than they are in our children. And we, that's why parents are up in arms. Your final word, what are you most worried about? You have 10 seconds. We're worried about the, the curriculum, we're worried about social and emotional learning, and we're worried that parents are gonna start to lose steam because this is a big education okay. blob and there's a lot of bad guys to fight. Got it, Nicole Neely, the education blob. Thanks for joining us, I'm Elizabeth McDonald. You've been watching the evening at on Fox Business, that does it for us.